So hello everyone, Leo here, Chilean physician and science fiction author and editor and welcome to this new video. Um, today I do plan to talk about science fiction itself. The prophecy is true. which I know it's a big subject um, and I've been thinking of how to do this video not so long uh, while at the same time being um, th th very informative, let's say, v very complete. So I had been waiting for this uh, video to happen. Uh, I wanted to be sure that I had my ideas um, organized and I feel that now it's, it's, it's a moment. Um, to talk about what is science fiction, at least to com to just share with you my ideas about this. And so just to mention two things in terms of this, I published in 2021 uh, an article, uh, a literary paper that is about this, about thinking about science fiction. Um, it's in Spanish, of course, I can, I can put on the link, but the name of it is Fractalism, a historical literary approach to science fiction. Uh, we're actually do this exercise of thinking about how we are thinking about science fiction and how can we keep thinking about it. And also I recently participated in a workshop uh, organized by the Chilean SF Association uh, where I was the tutor, the mentor of the second session, uh, which name was and in the beginning was science fiction. And it was about this, about what do we understand about science fiction. Nothing. So, not to be so, uh, not to extend myself so much, we know how hard it is to understand science fiction because I believe somehow science fiction became aware of itself. So, just like us, it's now in a constant existential crisis and it's gonna be like that forever, probably. <laughs> but at the same time, it's very interesting uh, and it tells a lot about science fiction itself. And it, you probably all know that we don't have a simple answer for this. We do not know. I mean, nobody has the truth about what science fiction is, probably. You can search on the, on the internet and you'll find more than 40 definitions just in a Wikipedia article. And you will, you can buy a lot of books that I, for example, just like me, that I have a lot of this and I get more confused the more I read, but I have fun. Um, so it is an interesting topic. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. And what I want to do in this video is just to tell you what I wanted to say, or, or my proposition in the fractalism paper, and then I want to tell you different levels of analysis where we can think about science fiction, of three different you know, like categories where we can have contrasting ideas so we can try to understand what or where, from where, what perspective we can actually go into science fiction. So just to start, I'm going to read you the summary, uh, the first part of the of the paper that I wrote, just for you to get an idea of what I, I presented there. And it's going to make sense then when I tell you the different levels of analysis that we can have about science fiction. So, it says, Literary fractalism arises as a reaction to the nominative problematic of science fiction as a synonymic conceptual and referential proposal in the face of a historically counterproductive indeterminism. As a cognitive and linguistic complement, it offers a unifying conceptualization through which its variety is understood from an irregular, intrinsic, and coherent dynamism. In the fantastic fractal model, the fractal is that which, having a natural and rational link with reality, is shaped by a dimensionality that necessarily exceeds it. So that's what I wanted to say with with the concept of fractalism. Um, just just a spoiler in terms of the paper, it's, it's the word itself, fractalism, although it serves the purpose of the idea that I wanted to present, um, is trying to actually still validate the science fiction concept, not trying to rename it, just as a, as a heads up. So that's my first, that's my global idea. That's what I work on that paper. I do invite you to read it. If you, if you can read Spanish, you can translate it. Uh, just to get way deeper into that. But then, 
then comes the exercise that the exercise that I want to do in this video, which is to say which are the levels where we can actually analyze science fiction. And and I've been working on this just to, to give you what I think it's a it's a useful tool to analyze it. And I separated this on three categories, three levels. Let's say levels. Explosion. <laughs> So, first level, without getting into other uh, kind of definition, let's say, first level would be, um, the first level has two ideas. First one, those who say science fiction starts with the when, when the name starts, you know, so when the name science fiction began to exist, then we can, we can talk about science fiction and everything before it's proto-science fiction. Well, you can have that. That comes with, you know, like the scientific or technological revolution um, as a historical context for that. And, and the other idea says that it doesn't matter when was the name invented because the essence of it has been around longer. So we can call science fiction a way longer corpus of books. Uh, which, for example, it would include, I don't know, like Frankenstein or or the War of the Worlds, books such as those, which you would say are science fiction, or that group would say that. You know, the other group would say, well, at that time it was called, you know, romantical science. I don't I can't remember the name, but it has it had a name at that time. So you know that that's the first level of analysis, just focusing, you know, on the name of it and kind of the essence of it that we would all kind of agree. But then, second level, if we're gonna go deeper within this idea, then we gotta go into what I divided of science fiction as a literary genre, or regardless if it's a literary genre or not. And the second level is within this, the regardless if it's a literary genre. In terms of that, those are the examples that, are gonna, that I'm gonna give you in this level. So I chose three definitions for you to to have in terms of what I believe it's a good example of understanding science fiction regardless of it as a literary genre. And first I have James Gunn. Uh, he said, science fiction is the branch of literature that deals with the effects of change on people in the real world as it can be projected into the past, the future, or to distant places. Then we have Philip K. Dick. He said, that science fiction is our world transformed into that which it is not, or not yet. The plausible conceptual dislocation within society, so that as a result a new society is generated. And then, as an extreme example of analyzing this, regardless of its uh, theory, it's uh, Norman Spindrad, with the famous definition that says, science fiction is anything published as science fiction. What? What the fuck? which would be a whole different analysis, right? But it, it works, it's still something interesting to, to analyze because it's important, it's important, it's, it's, it's an interesting definition. So that's the second level, but then we go deeper, third level. <laughs> right Let's assume it is a literary genre, uh, which of course is not an absolute truth, by the way, I do believe. Um, in Spanish and English, the concepts of literary literature and genre is different. So that's a cultural concept to keep in mind, but I'm not going to go into that. But third level, so it's, okay, let's say it is a literary genre, but it's not so easy because now we have to define what is a literary genre. And here you have two two, what would be the name, branches, rivers of ideas. First, you would have those that, that analyze literary genre as a region of conceptual space, which would try to search for a definition, which is what we usually do. But it's not the only way to understand literary genre. There is also that the, another concept that's genre as a temporally extended particulars, a historical particular, which means literary genre as a tradition rather than something that becomes a definition. Um, and so, for example, in terms of the literary genre as a, as a conceptual space, we have the classical definition of Darko Suvin, uh, which says 
that science fiction is a literary genre whose necessary and sufficient conditions are the presence and interaction of estrangement and cognition, and whose main formal device is an imaginative framework alternative to the author's empirical environment. Okay, that's the one that you mostly mainly find. But then there is this other conception that I truly like, uh, which is which I read from Simon Evelyn uh, with this there's this paper that I love. The name is But is it science fiction? It's a philosophical approach. And it says that, that literary genre is not this uh, conceptual space, but rather this historical particular that cannot actually be defined because it is a tradition. Um, and it gives a lot of examples of, of traditions, and it, it actually quotes Nietzsche that said, only that which has no history can be defined. Uh, so it's a whole different approach to what science fiction is, you know, would be this particular type of, of, of art. We haven't even talked about what art is or literature, but anyway, you, you know the you know the idea. Um, and as a tradition, it says, explains how can science fiction keep changing either to the past or to the future. It's a very interesting paper. Great Scott! So, we do have all of these territories of analysis, all of these different ideas of what science fiction is. Um, I know you can choose whichever you feel more certain to you, I would believe, uh, but it's fascinating. It's, I think it truly is, and that's something very beautiful about this form of literature or form of artistic uh, uh, thing. You must choose, but choose wisely. I, I, I do speak about literature because I'm not going I'm not gonna get into cinema or something else, but you know, but this type of literature. Um, and I'm thinking of for example some Chilean definitions from some friends, uh, authors, you know, Luis Saavedra, he says that science fiction is a sensorial experience, or Rodrigo Juri, uh, who says it's a movement, just a group of people. Laura Ponce from Argentina, she also kind of agrees with that idea of of just uh, science fiction as a movement, um, with a lot of historical endeavors let's say uh but it's something it's it's fascinating and it's in constant change and you can see that you can feel that you know with with current terms that are around um and that have been around for a long time you know there are other umbrella terms to try to understand science fiction for example you know i know in the northern hemisphere in the english uh, tradition currently you will usually find the concept of a speculative science of a speculative fiction um, and you can trace that to the importance it had in the times of Judith Merrill. Uh, I recently read, just out of curiosity, this article that talked about curio fiction, curio fiction uh, by Diane Callahan. And here in Latin America, you will find concepts such as, you know, the new weird, which would be something kind of englobing, encompassing all of this, um, in a way. And also from the academia, you, will, you, you wouldn't perhaps find the term science fiction, uh, but rather than non-mimetical literature. Come again for Big Fudge? So it is a thing. It is a it is a it's a lovely debate, and um, and 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 what I did what I did with my paper. Uh, I'm gonna just read you the 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 last part of it just to conclude this idea. But the the thing is, what I want to transmit is first I wanted to let you know all the levels of analysis that science fiction can have, so you can choose, so you can think about it. And, and I started and now I'm going to end with what I proposed in, in what I wrote. But maybe I'll change my mind later on, I don't know. Fine. You so what I meant by fractalism, going back to this exercise of thinking about thinking, uh, I wrote in the end of this, it says, Let it be understood, extrapolating from its original mathematical territory, that everything genuinely fractal, as a key property, is that which dimension, that is, the fractal dimension, is greater in rational terms than its topological dimension. Thus, it is understood that the fractal literature has indeed a link with reality in a natural and rational way. But its dimensionality, dimensionality, <laughs> necessarily exceeds it. Moreover, the fractal presents two primary characteristics it is too irregular to be described with traditional terms, and it is self-similar in terms of the same figure. 
So that's why I like the concept of fractal and fractalism to talk about science fiction. I think you will get the idea. And again, I do invite you to read the, the, the whole paper if you have the time or the curiosity or if you want to practice your Spanish or you can translate it. But but that's about it. It's a fascinating topic. That's that's my idea of, of, of science fiction or how to understand it. Uh, and also, I hope I, I was I, I really hope that this was informative as well for you to have certain levels of, of analysis uh, of how to try to put some order in terms of understanding science fiction, not not it just being a bunch of definitions, but that you can either have you know these several levels in terms of you know about the name if it's uh, regardless of a literary genre or what it, if it is a literary genre, how do we analyze that? And it's fascinating. We don't have the answer. I think that's the day we actually get to which get to understand what science fiction is. Probably we will have understood the meaning of life itself. And I'm not sure if we're close to finding the meaning of life, or are we? Pretty good. Pretty damn good. That. No! <laughs> I'm not sure. So, anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope it was fun, as well as informative. Um, I'm glad that I get to share this idea that I have, the fractalism idea. And this time I, I am going to ask you to please let me know in the comments what you think about this, because it's, it's an interesting debate. Uh, which level of conceptualization you like, whether you like this fractalism idea, which is just an exercise. I did not get into truly any kind of category and that's the whole point of it um that's the whole point of it um so let me know let me know what you think about this um and well it's this was not a short video but i i, I do i think it, it couldn't be made more you know shorter uh anyway if you like any of the topics that i mentioned i you can let me know as well and we can talk about one of those more extensively uh, and there is also the link to the YouTube video of the workshop that I did, but it's in Spanish, of course. And that's about it. So leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, that would be nice. I'm really having fun with this channel. Until next time. So, yep. This is your friendly dermatologist showing you that even, yes, I can see this, that even dermatologists don't have perfect skin. I was not expecting that. But I was expecting not to expect something, so it doesn't count. <laughs> and that's the last message. So that's about it. Hope you have fun. Hope you like this. Once again, let me know. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Goodbye.